Hello and welcome to Restoration DIY. In this episode, I'll be making a bowl from a piece of yew, cast into three colour epoxy resin. So without further ado, let's get into it. The first job was to remove the loose bark. For this, I used a hammer and chisel. It was fairly easy to remove, though some of it was pretty well stuck. When all the bark was removed, I gave it a good clean with a brass wire brush. Next, I marked the centre and I drilled a hole for the locating pin on my circle cutting jig. Using the bandsaw with a jig allows me to cut very accurate blanks. I start by cutting away the larger chunks, working my way around cutting ever smaller pieces. Eventually, I can then just rotate it through the blade to finish it off. However, on this one, I used the wrong hole in the jig, cutting the blank too big. So I had to do it again. Measure twice, cut once. One last clean with a wire brush, and it was ready for casting. I use a plastic bucket. This one has a diameter of 200 millimeters, eight inches. And to aid releasing the cured epoxy, I always apply a coat of wax. I decided to use three different colors of epoxy resin for this one, purple, green, and blue. Using my usual two to one mix, each batch contains 150 grams of part B to 300 grams of part A. Mix for a minimum of four minutes each. At the last minute, I decided to change the blue to pink. The inspiration for this came from the box design the mica powders came in. You can see it just to my left. Learning from my last resin project, I decided to leave the individual batches to stand until they began to heat up and part cure. I thought this would be around 30 minutes. However, because of the cooler autumn temperatures in the UK, it was actually an hour before I poured them into the casting bucket. I used a laser thermometer to check the temps, though I was using a combination of degrees and Fahrenheit, but I can tell you the ambient temperature was 13 degrees Celsius, and I poured them when they reached 52 degrees Celsius. With the resin beginning to cure, I placed the casting into the pressure pot, screwed the lid down tight, and added the now standard 50 to 55 PSI and left it for a minimum of 24 hours. It's two days later and the blank is cured. With the blank removed from the casting bucket, I could see a fairly big void had formed, but on closer inspection, I decided it wasn't a problem and would be easily turned out. After removing the excess from the waste block, I marked the center and drilled a hole for the woodworm screw and a smaller hole for the tailstock center. With the blank securely fixed to the lathe using a woodworm screw and the tailstock, I set the lathe to around 1000 RPM and I could begin turning. The Easy Wood Tools full size finisher was first up. The blank was already well balanced, so the first task was to remove the outer layers of resin to expose the timber underneath. The carbide cutter easily peeled away streams of resin to reveal the timber. Because of the height of the blank, I knew this was going to have a pedestal. I concentrated mainly on the lower section, so I could then start to form the cutout. Once the timber was exposed, I used a 3 8 bowl gouge to remove material from the lower section to begin shaping the cutout. I used the freshly sharpened gouge to cut down each side, gradually getting deeper with each pass. I find working with yew timber very satisfying. It cuts very smoothly, and I don't seem to suffer tear out like I do with other wood species.
Using a combination of push cuts and shear scraping, I slowly formed the cut out. On a couple of occasions, I caught the open blade on the opposite side of the cut, creating some deep gouges, but I still had some material to work with, so I was able to clean it up without too many problems. You can see the gouges in this clip, so after a bit more shear scraping, I switched to the carbide cutter to begin blending the cutout into the upper section. I still had a fair bit of resin to remove to get rid of the void, and I figured it would require the base to be reduced in size to keep things in proportion. Using the carbide cutter, I only removed just enough material to get rid of the void and reveal the wood. The true colours of the resin were beginning to show through, and I didn't want to lose too much of it. As I suspected, when I finished getting the upper section roughly to shape, the base and cutout needed some more work, so I set to with a gouge making it deeper and reducing the diameter of the base. And wouldn't you know it, I had another catch, which forced me to remove a bit more material, but that worked out okay in the end. So with that fixed, I began finalising the shape, gently removing material with a gouge, shear scraping the surface to leave as good a finish as possible. I was concentrating hard on not getting another catch inside the cutout, and I couldn't believe it when I did it again. It was a deep gouge, but this was a bit easier to get to. So I set to with a bowl gouge shear scraping the surface until the unsightly gash had been removed. I then used a skew chisel to blend it all back together again. With that sorted, the bowl just needed a bit more fine tuning to finalise the shape. final pass over with a skew chisel and the outside was done, after which I sanded with 80 grit to check for any tool marks, then I reset the tool post and began forming the mortise. Before cutting the mortise, I used the carbide cutter to remove the excess resin and the skew chisel to finish flattening the base. Then I used the thin parting tool to cut the outer edge of the mortise. This needed to have a diameter of around 50mm to suit the four jaw chuck. I cut down to a depth of 6mm, quarter of an inch. Then I used the gouge to remove the inner material. Then the dovetail cutter to cut the dovetail around the edge. And with the workpiece firmly held between the chuck and tail stock, I sanded from 80 to 3000 grit. After sanding, I removed the last little bit in the mortise and sanded it smooth. Then I cleaned down with denatured alcohol. All nice and clean, I then applied a liberal coating of sanding sealer which are de-nibbed with a non-abrasive scotch pad. Next up, Yorkshire Grit Abrasive Paste. A single coat, thoroughly cleaned away until no more is picking up on the paper towel. This is followed by the resin polishing. First, Merca Polar Shine 10, a single coat, thoroughly cleaned away, ready for the next Merca product. Polar Shine 5, a single coat, thoroughly cleaned away with paper towel to leave the resin with a deep shine.
Turn to finish, Hampshire Sheen Gloss Finishing Wax. Two coats to seal and protect the surface. So with the finishes applied to the outside, I turned the bowl around and began hollowing out. I started with a 3 8 bowl gouge, which was okay for a while, but probably because it had lost its edge, the resin started chipping, so I switched to the full-size carbide cutter. Once I got down to a reasonable depth, I concentrated on removing material from the outer edge. For me, this makes the workpiece more balanced, as well as giving better access into the bottom of the bowl. When I had the top section close to the finished wall thickness of around 10 millimeters, 3 eighths of an inch, I removed material from the bottom of the bowl, but the center support was in the way, so using the sharpened bowl gouge, I gradually thinned it down until it broke off. With that gone and out of the way, I used the carbide cutter to remove the waste down to the desired depth. Then I started to blend the base into the side of the bowl, stopping to check my progress as I went along. After a few more passes with the carbide cutter, the inside of the bowl was roughly to shape. I then switched to the large negative rate scraper to blend and fair the surface. Quick check for ridges and a final couple of passes with a scraper, and the inside was done. Sanding with 80 grit revealed a couple of small chips in the rim, which were removed with a skew chisel. Then I finished sanding from 80 to 3000 grit. After sanding, I cleaned down with denatured alcohol, then I applied sanding sealer, denibbed with a non abrasive scotch pad. Up next, Yorkshire grit abrasive paste, thoroughly cleaned away with paper towel. Followed by Merca Polar Shine 10, just a single coat, polished off, ready for Polar Shine 5, also polished off to leave the resin with a deep shine. And to finish, Hampshire Sheen Gloss Finishing Wax, two coats polished off with clean paper towel to seal and protect the surface. Well that's it, another project finished and I'm super happy with this one. Leaving the resin to park here before pouring it into the casting has created stunning colour separation. It also hasn't been soaked into the wood, which normally leaves a darker staining. And I particularly like how the wood figuring and the grain pattern blend into the resin patterning. So with that, I hope you enjoyed this video and I'd like to thank you for watching. Please subscribe, smash that thumbs up button and comments are always welcome. I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye for now.